In this article, you're going to learn how to find co-founders and investors for your hardware startup. Hi, I'm John Teal, founder of Predictable Designs. Um, I wanted to give you just a quick uh, summary of some of the uh, different uh, things you're going to learn in this article. First of all, you're going to learn that in order to uh, get, have investors, professional investors interested in your product, you're going to require some initial progress. You're going to require uh, some development work being done, uh, you know, having a prototype, uh, some marketing proof, and a realistic plan. You're going to have to prove to them that you're more than just an idea and that you can actually execute on the idea. That's going to be the thing that they are most interested in is you. And are you going to be able to execute on this idea? Um, you're going to learn that you should try to leverage uh, any of the successes you have to get other people excited um, about uh, being part of your 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 dream. So if you are able to get one investor, it becomes much easier to uh, get additional investors after the first one. Um, you're going to want to, even though this article is talking about, you know, finding investors, my recommendation is, is that you bootstrap your startup as long as possible, um, ideally to the point of having a, a prototype, a, a manufacturable prototype and uh, some interest from a, a retailer or some marketing proof of some sort. Um, the reason I recommend that you bootstrap is you have to keep in mind that uh, having too much money for a startup is dangerous. Um, it will just uh, cause you to try to take shortcuts and to uh, buy your success instead of uh, making the, the smart choices that need to be made. You want to be sure to take small steps and some, lots of small steps. But as soon as you have lots of money, then it's, it's hard to not want to try to skip some of these small steps and make take really big steps and that increases your risk and your likelihood ultimately of, of failing focus on finding investors and co-founders that that you like and that you get along with especially for the co-founders because it's going to be like a marriage you're, you're going to be with this person uh you know daily or at least talking to them daily and this will be uh, going on for years. There's going to be a lot of highs and a lot of lows you're going to share with them. So just keep that in mind. And you need to find someone that you actually like and can work with for the long term. Uh, don't take money from friends and family. I know some uh, places you'll read that's uh, an easy source of uh, initial investment. And it is. I, I can understand that. Um, uh, but unless you absolutely have to, I, I highly recommend that you don't because, uh, you know, the, honestly, the odds are that a hardware, any startup is going to is not going to succeed. And if you uh, have taken money from friends and family, it can jeopardize that relationship in the future. So uh, I recommend that you stick with professional investors that know what they're getting into and know the risk uh, when investing in startups. You always want to be marketing yourself, your product, and your company. Um, you have to always be building your, your network of connections, uh, especially for you know, finding investors and co-founders. You, you need a network. You can't just, uh, can't just find investors that you think may be interested in your product and just directly contact them. You need to find a connection with them first. And I also recommend that you find your co-founders before you start seeking investors. And the reason being is that professional investors are much more likely to invest in a startup with more than one founder. Uh, they, they know how complicated and how difficult it is uh, to manage a startup. So uh, the, the more founders with the more expertise that you have on your team, the more likely you are to get investors. In fact, the idea of the ideal founder team um, as this is from the book, uh, The Hardware Startup, that I highly recommend. They, they say the ideal team for a hardware startup is a maker, a hacker, and a hustler. So a maker is hardware, a hardware person, the hacker is a software person, and the hustler is the one that's you know, out marketing and, and making deals. And then finally, I would recommend that you add a recurring revenue uh, component to your business model. Uh, investors love recurring revenue. And if you have like a, a software subscription service that goes along with your hardware product, uh, where, uh, you know, your customers end up paying you a, a monthly subscription fee to continue using your software service with your hardware product, then that's going to be uh, a much easier uh, to get investors. And it will typically be uh, easier to scale your company as well. 
Okay, so I think that uh, quickly summarizes what, we're gonna, what you're going to learn in this article. Be sure to read the full article to learn all the details.